So uh, it's such a pleasure to introduce this man. He's been a great inspiration for me. I know a lot of you know him already. And I introduced him last year. I'm super big smile on my face to introduce him again this year. Um, this man has uh, really pioneered a lot in the breatharian pranic movement. He's the facilitator of facilitators. He's a teacher, a mentor, an inspiration for many of us. So Tal Gaboa, thank you for joining us. I know your journey started way back in 2011. You've accumulated so much wisdom and experience since then. I know that you work tirelessly for humanity. At least that's how I see it. And so I'm super thrilled to have you here again this year. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Dulani. So much. If we have questions, please reserve them for the end, and we'll have a chance to answer them at that time. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good to see you so much. Well, I'm so happy to be, to be here in present with you, to have the privilege to come to Eden Pranic Center, Nicolas to your home, and to Rafaela home. Let's say thank you to Nicolas and Rafaela. <laughs> and of course to Morgan and even a partner Jonathan and all the team thank you to all the team really and it's such a blessing because you know to make such an event and to bring all of us together I feel it's important now I feel it's really really important let's say for our individual work and for the planet for humanity in a way, as Morgan said, I have the privilege to, who don't know me, my name is Tal Gilboa. Hello. And I have the privilege to walk this path since 2011. Actually, 7th of February, 2011, 2011 is when I started my process. Back then it was 21 day process. Many of you know probably the 21 day process. Who knows it? Just wonder, the 21 day process today. Okay. <laughs> So it's cool. In the past, Nikolai was much more hands, right? So it's like less people maybe know this because there is, I would say, a lot of evolutionary as well processes. But I've done a beautiful and old one, a 21 day process, which is wonderful. And it was like a rebirth for me. And since then, I could say that my life has changed for the best in such ways that I, I still didn't even perceive in the beginning. And to some of us that walk the pranic path, you maybe even know what I mean. And just even to wonder, because I like to see who we're playing with, like what's what's in the field. So who is already in the site in here and already have done a pranic process in his life? Okay. And and who is here but haven't done a pranic process? And who is here and didn't eat too much, so he thinks he's weak and he couldn't lift his hand? <laughs> so food is not your power, huh? <laughs> Alone. <laughs> but yeah, with that being said, so to the people that walk this path, you've seen how much this path changes from deep within. And for people that not, you are interested in it. Something in it is appealing to you. It's calling to you in a soul level. And with that, and to the people that is called in a soul level, I know that Many of us maybe, let's say, have done different processes in our life, not connected to prana. Maybe we've done processes in our life connected to prana. But either way, sometimes we have this um, inner judge, let's say, that might say, darn it, I failed. I failed to do something. I failed in this process. I failed in this project. I failed in my couplehood. I failed as a parent. I failed. Honestly, who had this in his mind? Maybe his neighbors. Somebody had put this in our mind. Now, I, I want to touch this point for a moment because first what I see as a person that walked this path for a few years now, more than 12 years, I have the privilege to walk it. More than 10 years, I have the privilege to guide it for groups and individuals. 
what I've seen that there is no failure. And there is a sentence that I heard many years ago, it's not mine, but it says that there was not born the first persistent person that had failed. Because if you keep on persisting, you never fail. And it's something so important because as humans, we are energy beings and our energy is determined by a lot of different things, but a lot of how our energy is determined is by how we treat ourselves from within. And sometimes some of us from within, we would be so nice to others, we would be so nice outside, but from within sometimes, sorry for this word, but we can be a bit more violent and be a bit more judging. We are more easy with the hand that puts down on us the whip. And many of us have done different processes or will do different processes. But I share this about the pranic journey for a moment because as a person that sees this for so many years, this is one of the deepest journeys that the soul can do. Wow. And this is such a brave choice to make in the reality of where we are right now. Because sometimes I'll go backwards and yeah, it would just be, we made the two versions, wind version and not wind version. If you prefer, you can also use this mic. If, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. So one of the things that can really, in a way, put us down in this journey is in a life journey is this sad that we failed something. But as a person that sees this journey for so many years, I see that it is a journey of years. And some of us, sometimes we come to a 21 day process, a 11 day process, 10, 9, 8, 7, 3, 2, 1. I touched your forehead and you're pranic. Ching! <laughs> Doesn't work so much. And we need to start and understand that because, you know, as humans, we want everything quick. We want it tomorrow, and if it's possible, with no effort. Is what I call basic human nature. Is not good, is not bad. It's just to know our basic human nature. Is our starting point. But it's people that do consciousness work, people that do soul work, people that do relationships work, people that do the work. And we're people that do the work. That's a plus to us for doing so much work. <laughs> amazing for all the work that we are doing and i know that the light being that are coming in here and as well you guys in zoom at home or in youtube or wherever where people that are doing work otherwise we probably sit now in netflix and munch something no <laughs> or we would smoke we would do something else yeah and there is pranic people that smoke and munch i know it's okay no judgment <laughs> but they say not as the main thing in our life necessarily now as people that do the work we are really here to deepen the journey and with that i want to emphasize this mind mind is like this explosive right it's called the mind that we can step on and in a pranic journey and in life journey we want to be able to allow a wisdom that is deeper than the basic human nature that can come to just our next step in our own human nature without comparing to other, without judging another or ourselves. Just be humble enough to see where I am right now. Be humble enough to see where reality and humanity is right now. And from there to do my next step to my next level from basic human nature to higher human nature. Basic human nature is there with the whip to tell us what we've done wrong, where we've failed, why we're not good. All of this is from good intentions. It's an old paradigm of self-improvement. It's an old paradigm that just wants us to become better in life. And we think that through this, I would not, let's say, be easy on myself. If I'll be harsher, I'll remember the lesson. Like this, I would really grow. But from a beautiful group of people, I want to ask an honest question. 
for the people that know this paradigm within ourselves. Let's say it maybe moved us a bit in life, but I want to ask if it's really moved us in a significant way to self-improve in life, whipping ourselves. Who, who it's really improved in, in life, really whipping ourselves. I see two, three hands, three hands, four. That by whipping ourselves, we really made it good. <laughs> ah, no, somebody, one less hand. <laughs> so I don't say it for nothing and I don't say it for nothing now because I feel it's like a junction that we are facing now as individuals and as collective and it's the way we feed our energy from within now there is many ways to pranic living and pranic living is so much because if the energy in the past was only through food, now we open to the buffet of life. And we can get nourishment from so many subtle, subtle things or big things. But now I touch one type of nourishment, which is actually one of the deepest. Doesn't matter if we're pranic in our diet, let's say, and living on a higher percentage, on a lower percentage. It's important for everybody. But yeah, for pranic beings, which all of us are pranic beings, it's just the percentage we are. Let's say high percentage pranic beings, it matters even more. How we treat ourselves from within. And this thing, this old paradigm that it's in humanity, that is an energy leak to human beings, our self-criticism, our stories of old paradigm of self-improvement. <sighs> oh, I'm bored, let's get over it already. <laughs> but I'm as well patient to humanity and to myself in this path. But it is this, is to be able to see this basic human nature that eats our energy from within and say, hey, I know this path of judging me. I know this sound of I failed again. I know this voice of, oh, I didn't succeed. I disappointed my partner. I disappointed my father. I disappointed my mother and my friend. I disappointed myself. Which is good to feel for a moment in order to get maybe just in touch with our emotions because they're there. But then not to be stuck in it because this is the root of suffering. And we know this root of suffering is not agreeing to reality. Is not the criticism. Is I have an emotion, I have a feeling. I have a feeling coming up inside of me. And this feeling is natural. And it fills me and I feel it and it moves through me as a wave. It's natural. But they call it strong spices. Feelings are like strong spices. You put too much salt. <sighs> Too, put too much coriander, all the food is coriander. You too much spicy puts, some people could not eat. You put nothing, it's okay. It's okay. Some people are yogis. No judgment, it's okay. But you put just the right amount, life is tasty. Same with our feelings and the root of emotions, feelings, or suffering, pain or suffering. I might experience pain. I might experience like, oh, I could have done better. Great, that's true. But over there starts the suffering. The feeling is momentary. It's the wave that's passing through us. The suffering starts when I disagree with reality. When I come to creator and I say like, hey, I know better. When I come to, when I come to naughty creation, that has their ways of how to play with us humans. And I say like, no, nah, it shouldn't be like this. I know better than you. And creation is like, yeah. <laughs> I would not compete with you. I'm just creation. I'm just doing mine. Now, this is something so, so significant in our journeys. Because once we fight with creation, once we do not accept reality as is, suffering starts. And when the suffering is appearing as human, 
beings and as pranic beings, we are nourished less good from within. And I will touch more points today, but I really ask you to contemplate in this life, if you wish, if you resonate with this, into your day-to-day -day life. Next time when I catch the whip, I want to improve myself, but I'm a beaten being, beaten being. And instead of that, only what I can offer is when the hand is there up, Give yourself a hug. If you still don't wait for a hug, the hand is up, pick it yourself a little bit. Laugh at this beautiful being that wants to be better in life. Not laugh on it, yeah? Not laugh on myself, not put myself down. Just on the behavior. It's like, oh, I'm so sweet. I just want to be better. <laughs> and I think that by whipping myself, it would actually do it. <laughs> no. And another paradigm, which is a little bit more of higher human nature to the ones that are interested and feel resonating with, is this ability. When I get this old pattern of self-improvement, instead of being harsh with myself, being kind with myself, being sweet with myself, being soft. Now I feel being soft to some of us, no, but if I would be too much soft, I wouldn't do it. I would not be soft. This is only for women. This is only for weak men. This is only for weak women. <laughs> I grew up strong. I would not be soft. Well, good luck. <laughs> I had a beautiful friend sharing with me that he feels he cannot really show. This is, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, yeah? It was just a man friend. But he told me I could not, I don't feel I could really be weak next to my wife. You know, she needs to see me as a strong man that holds the house. Now, some men are in this paradigm. You know, some women maybe is in paradigm in this paradigm. We need a strong man to hold the house. But what happens if my man is not only a man? But is it possible that my man before is a man, is a human being? And as well, my woman, the same. And before we take all these roles on ourselves, it's what we need to be or how the other need to be. A man or a woman, they would be strong. But that's why I would be weak in some days. What I told to this brother is something simple. I told him, my brother, for you and how I see it, if you are interested, you just need to be you. It doesn't matter if you're strong or weak. And in your home, next to your family, there is no way not to be you. There is a path to that. Eventually, it's called divorce. Yeah. Because when you're not you for the long term, you would not stay there. Not in this relationship, not in this work, not in this house. You would not stay there. You could hold it for a bit just to please the other, just because this is your way you're habited. But it's not sustainable for your relationships. It's not sustainable for your actions. So what that I should just be myself with my wife? I know it's so hard, no? But you cannot do nothing better than that. And if she does not accept you when you're weak, you know what? I don't know if she's your wife. Sorry to say it with this. And same for opposite, doesn't matter, man, woman. Yeah, I just talked with my brother. But you just can be you. I'm, I just can be me. And you know, when I'm me, some people don't like me. 
if I'm pleasing everybody, ah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> Look at this nice guy. But when I'm really, and everybody, for everybody, I'll be the nice guy, for the nice woman. When I'm really me, it splits something. Some people would not like me. When I'm really me, some people would yell at me. Some people would judge me. Some people would ever try to harm me. Depends the size of what I do and how much triggers it's triggering. But on the other way, some people would love me. Not just in Italy, yeah? I speak about all of that. Some people would say, this is the man. This is the woman. This is who I'm resonating with. I'm vibing with him. The frequencies match. And I'll try to be not you, and by that create an energy match. Good luck. People try to do it, and it's ending up in divorce. Or whatever in our work or life. So this gift and pranic gift as nourishment for ourselves to simply be us. You don't like me? It's okay. It's your story. Yeah. Most important is that I like me and most important is that I am myself. But then again, we come back to the weeping story. Because over there, when I am myself, sometimes I like me. Sometimes I do not agree with what I do. And I feel that over there we were measured. We are measured there. Would we eat our energy from inside in a not sustainable and not nourishing way? Or would we take, if we may, a different way? Because we started from what we say in within. We need to be soft. We need to be strong. This is too soft. This is too strong. But I feel in where we are right now, the species, we need more of this womanhood quality of softness. And in that, I want to give you thanks, women, your inspiration of softness in our life. And I want to thank you all the men that finds the softness within, softness in within, and rather than this in life. And it doesn't matter because I might be a woman and really hard on myself or a man and really soft, but this paradigm of I don't want to be too soft because I don't want to not get the lesson is in a way like a stick in our wheels. And if I understand, and this is what I share with you, a movement I've done from within. I know this from the neighbors of being not soft with myself. <laughs> ah, honestly, I know it on myself as well. And yeah, this sweep didn't take me nowhere. But when I got to this position that I say to myself, okay, this is not working. And I understood it on a cellular and soul level. I've approached into other paradigms. And my pranic journey have helped me a lot in this. Because I understood that I'm malnourishing myself. I'm nourishing myself not in a good way from within. So it took me to examine different paradigms which brought me to this paradigm of it's better more than harshness, the compassionate being, the softer being. It doesn't mean I'm a wimp. I have no spine. It just means if it's already have happened, I know that creation knows better than me. If it already happened, I would feel the emotions, I would feel the feelings that come in the beginning, but I would not prolong to the suffering. The feeling is maybe pain or happiness, it doesn't matter. The prolonging is what creates the suffering. 
the spontaneous wave that comes in me is natural, after is my mind pulling me. And we have the best teachers. Let's look at children. Right? They jump like this. They cry. They're angry. They're this. A minute after. <laughs> this is our nature. This is our nature. But as adults, and then we start to see it in children, up until the moment that they use it in a manipulated way to get something from the parent, to get something from the friend, to get something from whatever. And when we start acting in this manipulated way, we start getting into this inner paradigm of suffering. We maybe just want something from the other, but there is a sentence on anger. Some of you might know it. Sometimes, sorry, it's harsh. Sometimes anger could be like wanting to harm the other person, but is taking the spoon of poison ourselves. Now there is again spontaneous feeling, spontaneous anger, something that is okay. But then there is, I stay angry on this person. This is just my mind, prolonging it into suffering. And this is nimbling on our life energy. Doesn't matter if our percentage of pranic living is higher or lower. It's relevant for all of us human beings. And again, I emphasize, especially to people that live more on prana. So already, if you're in the path or on the path or wanting to start in the future, I would really advise you in a warm, loving, kind way to start observing it. And to do slowly, slowly your steps from basic human nature into higher human nature in your field where you are. And for this, for this, I want to invite three genius people from our history. So I told you before, there is the sentence that says there was not born the first persistent person that has failed. And there is a genius guy named Edison. We know this guy, right? Thomas Edison. That by history and what it says, invited the light bulb. And there is different theories of how much times he experimented before. He made this light bulb work. But in most theories, it's above 1,000. <laughs> Let's say even 1,111 tried just for our game. And if he tried so much, imagine what if he would fail, if he would feel around 897 target. I've failed. I don't know, it might be good because maybe we'll just be sitting next to <laughs> you know, fire. I don't know, it's a, it's a bit ambivalent. I don't know if ambivalent is a word in English, it's in Hebrew. Ambivalent, it's like, it has two sides. <laughs> yeah. So with that, I don't talk now only about the light bulb, I talk about this. And there is a man in Israel that wrote a book that the name of it is similar to this. This man, his dream was to be a millionaire. This is his dream. Every one is dream. Yeah, that's his dream. But this was his dream. And he said, this is what I want to do in my life. I don't care even with what. I just want to be a millionaire. And then he had a company that he started. Didn't work out. Another company didn't work out. Another company bankrupt. Another company, another company. This was quite an intense story, but it was 17 companies that he went through. Now imagine his wife in the 15th company. <laughs> what are you doing? You're going to fail. I am here up until I succeed. And then he wrote a book. The name of the book is Try, Try, Try. 
try, 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 try. I think you wrote it 17 times. Try, try, try. Up until you succeed. Edison didn't stop in the 17. And this is the thing, because if we're in a pranic journey, some of us might feel, I made a journey and I failed it. I've opened a business and I failed. I'm not good. I would just stay alone. I cannot be in couplehood in life. We never fail as long as we continue. And this is a thing of humbleness. Because if my ego drives me, I feel shame from others for my failure. I feel harsh on myself. But if it's not ego anymore, it's just observation on human nature. It's just understanding of, yeah, we're born here knowing nothing. And maybe some would say, yeah, but there is the genes. And yeah, there is like coded information. And yeah, there is like aliens putting things inside us. Like many theories. <laughs> I'm not getting into the theories. I just say, bottom line, with our human behavior, we come here tabula rasa. Empty page. Or maybe some things are coded, but we learn by movement. So if I allow myself to feel I'm a failure because I didn't succeed 17 times in the business or in 17 different relationships, or even if in 17 pranic processes or 1,111 light bulbs, I just let my ego play with me and probably I would fail because I stopped. But if I'm not driven from my ego anymore, I just say, oh, pal, it's okay. It's really okay. You came here knowing nothing. So you learn another way how not to do it. You learn a little bit how to do it better for your next step. For your next journey. For your next whatever. This approach is a sustainable approach. Now, there is more beautiful approaches. I don't speak as only one approach as the only one. I just speak as somebody that's seen this journey for so many years and see where it, people are eating themselves from within. And see where when we put more focus, energy, and higher human nature, we're starting to be nourished in such a high quality way. And yeah, it's great to go out to nature. It's great to meditate. It's great to exercise. It's great to do so many things that can support our life. And as well our pranic journeys. But this inner talk from within determines the quality of our life. And determines the quality of our nourishment from within. And with that, please, if you still bring out the whip, don't whip the whipper. Okay? If it's there, there is three stages that I observed and that some of you know on the way to change the habit, to change a habit. First, would be just the first stage. Ah, it happened again. I catch it after. I start judging myself. I feel like, ah, but I'm conscious to it. Why it happened again? It happens because we're conscious to it again. Just, I say it differently, I'm sorry. It happens because it happens. We see it more because we're conscious to it. Before it just happened in an unconscious way. First stage only. Be happier on the path. Second stage. We catch it in the moment. I catch myself whipping myself. And again, it's, it's on any change of habit. I catch myself whipping myself. I catch myself angry again. I catch myself again wanting to say that to the person, but I'm feeling shy or not worthy or whatever. I catch myself, but I feel I still don't have the resources. 
is the harsh part. I'm seeing myself in the act itself, and I still don't have maybe the power, the strength, the choice to do different. It's not fun, the second stage. <laughs> but hey, it's just the second stage. <laughs> We're coming to the third one. In this, in this third stage, I'm catching it finally a moment before I do it. And there is the only time when I'm, in a way, receiving freedom. Up until here, I was just a habit. I was just an act of my habit in this manner about this topic. Now I only get the first time, sorry, now for the first time, I get the freedom. But guess what? There is inertia in life. And when we have this freedom, it looks like this, we're on a junction right now. But when I have this freedom, it doesn't mean I'll choose to do what I really wish to do or how I wish to see myself. Actually, there is stronger forces to the inertia. The inertia, you don't need to make any effort. You just go down. Just go down to basic human nature, back to your habits, back to your stories, back to your old belief systems. If it's in the way you treat yourself or if it's what you tell yourself when you're in a pranic journey and all the challenges come in the beginning. It's just when we're in the third stage, a manner of inertia, the easy path down or yes, healthy effort. And so I was like, no, effort is not good. <laughs> Let's be effortless. Cool. It's called Wu Wei, effort without effort, like do without do, right? So we want to move energy in our life. We want to make a healthy effort. We want to build muscles, not to be a bodybuilder, but just to be strong. But this is also very important muscles. To be on this junction and to be able not to fall down to inertia, but to make that effort to choose differently. And by that, combine Edison. I try, 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 try. I'm finishing the lecture like this. I try, try, try. <laughs> Tomorrow, try, try, try. <laughs> Up until you succeed. But then I invite you to bring in the second genius. Somebody say that Einstein was quite a wise person. And he gave many gifts to us humanity. He gave some things that are controversial as well. Not by bad intention, maybe. But he as well said something that many of us know. If you do the same act and expect a different result, he just called it insanity. So with Edison, I invite us to play with the second genius, Einstein. And take this inspiration of I try, I try, I try up until I succeed. But if I try to go straight in here all the time, you know, Einstein would call me not sane. <laughs> so sometimes in the wisdom of Einstein, he would just say like, hey, try a different path, my friend. So try, try, try up until you succeed. But every few tries, not the first two or three, okay? Because sometimes it just doesn't work in the beginning. <laughs> we need to hold it a bit. But after a few tries, a few tries, a few tries, a few tries, it doesn't work, please change your angle. Move your energy. Don't be attached. Jump. Shift. Be creative. Combine Einstein and Edison together. And then we get to our third genius. Because some would say, but Tal, I can't. I don't succeed. I could not do it. Now, even before the first genius, there is a beautiful rule that say, and it's been tested and studied in many different places on many different aspects, physically, emotionally, mentally, even spiritually. But there is some kind of a rule in humans that around the 40% of our capacity come, comes up that I cannot do it anymore. <laughs> And we really believe this story. It's 
40% of where our capability, our capacity, our abilities are just lying now on the graph. The partner of my amazing sister just came back from France two weeks ago from a run of 90 kilometers. Not 19, yeah? 90. <laughs> what? I looked at him as people looked at me in the beginning of my pranic journey. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I really felt this. It was funny. Does human can, human can do it? <laughs> Are actually humans doing this thing? And he said, yeah, but I build up for that, right? I know his journey. I know his practice. He didn't start from 90 kilometers. But he told me something nice. He said, you know, around the 40-something kilometer, I felt I'm about to drop dead. Honestly, I read it was hard already before <laughs> in the kilometers, but just the 40-something, I had an inner feeling that I might die in this race. <laughs> I started blessing my partner, my sister, the child they have, <laughs> started giving blessings to everybody. But he just kept on running. And this is so beautiful because some people would have this inner state of what he had in, his, in himself and they would believe this state. So he would just say, okay, I stopped the run. <laughs> Paramedic. Now some people do it. Some people did it in his race as well. It's 90 kilometers. <laughs> But some people move on. And he moved on. And it is to know this state inside of us, to know this story of the 40%. And when we meet it in our life, I cannot do it. I will not succeed. I'm not able to. Wait a minute. Is it possible that I'm only in my 40%? You know what? I'll even be easy with you. Only 40% you've left. You're in the 60%. We still have some to spare. Now it's significant because when we meet this in life, okay, I try, try, try up until I succeed. I'm changing. And then I'm changing again. And then I'm changing again. When is my breaking point? There is no breaking point. I will decide when it's coming, but based on the third genius. Four told us, if you believe you can do it, or if you believe you cannot do it, in both ways, you are right. You are right. And this is so significant because after we're combining the first two geniuses, if we don't combine Ford, and his geniosity, if we don't combine this understanding that I would be the one that determines how my life looks. I would be the one to determine if I could do it or not. It's not even what my mind tell me. This is not really me, it's a part of me. It's not really what my body tells me. This is not really me, this is just a vehicle for me. It's not what I, my emotions put me down to and make me feel so weak or unable or small. No, it's just a sweet part. It's one, one of my buddies. It's not me. And not even if my spirit feels broken. It's for me to determine that I combine these three geniuses in my life. Will I try, try, try up until I succeed? Every few tries, I would shift away just to not be insane by Einstein. And I would know all over the way, all along, that no matter what, I can do it. And I'll tell you a nice story. After about nine years, I facilitate pranic journeys. Pranic journeys. From Israel people that are doing it, individual or in groups, or all around the world, individuals or groups. My mother came to me. 
And she told me, you know what, Tal? In the beginning, I thought you're crazy. <laughs> but then, you know, slowly, slowly, I saw you're okay. Then slowly, slowly, I saw you're even better. Your mind is more sharp. Your energy is higher. You feel better in life. Something purified inside of you. Even your blood tests look better than what it was when you're eating regularly. I start seeing there is something in this prana. <sighs> and then it took her a few more years. But then she came to me after about nine years and she told me, Hi, Tal, it's my time. Can I be pranic? <laughs> so yeah, I started doing this to her. <laughs> wow, mother. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would believe? But yeah, my mother was determined. And she felt it's her time to decrease her dependency on food. To decrease her emotional baggage around it. To decrease the feeling of at least my mother i don't know how, how is it for you but we knew that more than three hours without water she would be out more than half a day with no food there's no mother and as my sister my father myself if we went to trips or something always we took care you know that something would be there for mother for our mom and she wanted to decrease these dependencies and not to be so moved and dependent on food. And she was 65 when she did the, the process. So she said, you know, I want as well to be a healthier being. And I see the health of your students and people that have done it, and as well you. I feel the call for this. But yeah, my mother couldn't be more than three hours with no water. So she told me, you know, I really want but that how I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really afraid. I'm really, really afraid. And over there, I presented there what I would present you. And I say, uh, I don't know, again, every each one, and there is in here facilitators and students and different methods. I don't judge nothing, but I really stay strong for what I do. And not just because I do it, but because what I experienced in pranic processes. So before I complete my mother, what I have experienced, as I told you, 21-day process, amazing process. But I came into the process with no preparation. Nobody guided me before. There was no preparation of how to come to this process and not just climb the mountain. Okay, you climb the mountain, then what? There's life. You've made an achievement. Okay, I want to open my business. This is my dream. I want to open my business. I want to open. Okay, you opened your business. And then what? <laughs> Somebody needs to take care of it. My dream is just to, to be a good husband, to be a good wife. I want a couplehood. I want, this is my dream, to meet the man or the woman of my life. Okay, you met them. And then what? That's it? If you don't nourish it, if you don't sustain it, it would go. Now, the pranic journey, you need to come more prepared for it in my humble perspective. It's one of the deepest journeys that a human being can do. And as well, to some of us, one of the most challenging. So I told their mother, don't worry, because we're going to do preparation. You're not just jumping to initiation. We're going to do more than two months of preparation just to prepare your different bodies, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, to prepare your surroundings, to prepare my father, <laughs> to prepare your friends, to prepare yourself, in so many different aspects that, you know, just as a person that have the privilege to walk this path with hundreds and hundreds of people, more than 10 years, I already started observing the repetitive loops, the repetitive paradigms, what can help a person? What can bring them down? What if we prepare in advance can allow a smoother journey? But not just to come to the peak. I did an initiation. 
I say to the students a lot of times, you know, give me every group of 100 people from the street, give me a few days with them, they can be prepared to make an initiation. And we'll do initiation with few days, no food, no water. This is the way that myself and my team are doing it. So for regular person from the street, few days, no food, no water, we can be prepared in a few days. But what is more interesting, in my humble perspective, is the long-term, is the long-term journey with the pranic nourishment. Because this is like what really makes the difference. Not just the pranic initiation I've done 12 and some years ago. Which was great. No complaints to the initiation. My guides, I love them deeply and profoundly. But it's just a paradigm I do not agree with. If we want to go and now, for example, you know, be a machinery, a person that even changes engines in the car, you don't know how to do it in a day. You need to study a bit so it would not explode in your face or you would not destroy the person's engine. Same for our engine, guys. And most of us are nourished now from engine that is based in the world. In here, there is different, there is different quality and percentage, but in the world, most of us are nourished from engine that is based mainly on food. And the way I call it in us, in pranic beings, that the percentage of prana goes higher is that we open a hybrid engine inside of ourselves. One that is not only nourished from food alone, but as well nourished from prana, from life energy. And in order to do that in a humble way, in my humble perspective, you need more than a few days. You actually need even more than a few months. And to some of us, it's a year's journey. Now, because we want everything now, tomorrow, and in the easiest way, some of us wouldn't like this. But just as an observer, for so many years, I can tell you, be patient with your pranic journeys. Be patient with your soul journey. And know to try, try, try up until you succeed. Know to, even if in pranic journeys you didn't succeed something, you can still do another way and try another approach and believe in yourself to the depth all the way through. But make a journey. This is something I could just humbly advise you. Because when we do not make a journey, we would not necessarily be able to sustain the pranic living for long term. When we make a long-term journey, when we come with ourselves, even if we do a short journey, we understand that this is going to be a journey of months, maybe years right now. So to some of us, it's hard to perceive the years. Let's just start perceiving the months. I'm now going to do a journey, not just of 21, 11, 9, 8, 3, 2, 1, bam, days. I'm going to do a journey for a few months at least right now. Some of us finish a process, we're hyped, feel amazing, we're not prepared. And then what happens after? Some of us have experienced it maybe. He doesn't last. So if you're walking this path, please be humble to walk it, let's say, for at least a few months if you want to find the depths of it. And if you come and after a very short time, you say, it doesn't work for me, you just started. It doesn't always work in the beginning. <laughs> and in this journey, a lot of times it takes time. So I told to my mother, mom, don't worry. We have a preparation stage of more than two months. And please tell me this in the end of the preparation stage. Tell me how you feel. Now, in the preparation stage, she felt fine in the end, but she told me something more interesting when we were in our third dry day. When we were in already three days, no drinking, no eating, she came to me and she said, Tal, 
what is happening in my body. I was a woman that could not be like this for more than three hours. I feel energized. I want to do something. <laughs> what is happening right now? I'm full of energy. And I, I'm afraid that something's wrong. <laughs> and I told her, no mother, you just done a really good work in preparation. So even if we have a limitation inside of our mind, no, we could not do this. And my mother was really on this belief system for 65 years. I could not be more than three hours without water. But she gave me a gift and I give this gift to you. She told me something inside of her being shifted in the preparation. And she understood in a deep way. If other human beings have done this journey and succeed in it. What is different in me? If others do it, it means that I could do it as well. And when my mother, and when I observed these moments when she shifted in her mind and understood it in a deeper way, is when her journey started blossoming already in the preparation. So this is super significant because when we play in these realms, the these realms of prana and life energy are more subtle realms, are not only like very dense realms. The movements are very harsh, are very slow. No, subtle realms that can be as well very quick, sometimes quantum. Quantic, quantic, how do you say? Quantic? No, quantum is a quantum, but like, you get me, you get me, quantic. <laughs> you can do quantum leaps like this, that's what I mean. The journeys can be like of quantum quality. So we went over there to observe in a deep way how we play within and what is moving from within. Super, super significant. But if I start telling you the story of my mom, I, I will tell you we've done... By this, I could even introduce you the process we do in Israel. You're, you're interested in this process? Yeah? So it's something that is called the full pranic process. This is the name I gave it. It's not anymore 21 days or 11. It's not even three months. It's the full pranic process. And it's a process of all together right now, almost nine months that we do. Starting with two months of preparation experience of more than a decade of how to prepare a soul, a being, a body, an emotional body, a mental body, and a spiritual body to this journey in the best way, and as well the surroundings of the people. And this is just our appetizer, no? <laughs> our pranic appetizer. We go to the second stage of the journey, which is the initiation. One week of initiation eating phones, life, work, family, everything aside and go in within. And over there, we combine a few days with no food and no water, but as well deep soul practices to evoke the pranic engine. And I say evoke, not install, because this engine is already installed by default in all of us. Is our birthright. And what we do after, like the beautiful diamond that has so many layers of mud. So in a way, our pranic, our pranic soul and our pranic engine has a lot of layers of wood <laughs> <laughs> that have just congest there. So, and as well habits and stories and belief systems and doubts and collective influences and individual own influences. So we prepare the ground in the preparation, and then in the initiation, we go deep within into soul activations, combining these few dry days that together with the preparation that we've done, open a pranic engine in one's being. But I, I'm used to say to the students and to the people that I'm privileged to work with, Every stage is the most important in its own stage. The preparation is the most important. So, of course, we can come prepared to the journey. We don't just 
want to go there and then just fail, so called, but it's not failure, it's just I didn't succeed, succeed next time. <laughs> Let's succeed already this time. So you want to come ready to the journey in all the different bodies, in all the different aspects, from outside, from within. After it comes the second stage, which is our base, is the way we open the pranic engine. It is so, so, so significant to the journey. And some people are asking me, Tal, can I just do that? I said, no. I said, what do you care? I'll give you money. <laughs> no. I don't work for you. I work for creation, God. So with that, just taking you through initiation, I know I probably won't do so good to you. And yeah, by the way, it's coming from my personal trauma. I finished the 21-day process. I was hyped. But then guess what? I stopped eating. But I start eating slaps for good morning on my face. <laughs> Whoa. Like not really on my face, yeah? But like what's coming today? What's chatting is coming today? I'm becoming skinnier. And my friend thinks I'm crazy. My sister stopped stop speaking with me. I have doubts from within. I don't eat, but I eat myself from within. And I see how I lose my energy. And nobody there, even though my guides are amazing human beings, I love them so deeply and profoundly. I have zero blame. I'm even thanking them. But yeah, back then I felt beaten. So I say, sorry if I say no to people, but I don't want to put you in a position that I created for you, this beating. So I don't just do initiations. And then after the second part, it's so important, comes the real part, the third part, that is the most important out of all. Integration into our day-to-day -day life. So many workshops we finished and we were like, yeah, I've changed forever for these next two days. Two weeks. I give you two months. <laughs> but there is no integration process. And it's not even our say, blame or fault. There's nobody fault because also our people that guided us probably have just done the best that they know. So zero fault. 111% responsibility. Taking the responsibility, I understand in this process, when I approach something so deep, I need to prepare myself good. And after I've done that and I've initiated myself, it's better I integrate into my life this process, because otherwise it would just be another thing, another experience, another hype in my life, that is fading out of my life. And if I want it to be sustainable, yeah, there are quite some challenges in the society as it is today, in most parts, the people that ask to walk a pranic path. If it is, if it is challenges with our families, with our friends, with our coworkers, with society, we would call it, if it challenges with our habits, with temptation, with our relationship, with food. If it challenges physically that we're experiencing our body changing, reshaping. If it's emotions, suddenly when there is not so much food to stuff them, they start rising up. It's our mental aspects that is full with stories about what is right or wrong, about what we're capable or not capable. Wait a minute, but my doctor says, great, and maybe he's right in his own world. I don't say nothing bad about doctors. They do beautiful work, but some of them are just reading to us a manual guide that companies that sell pharmacy products written to them. So they're not even not good people. They're just, you know, someone on the way of a chain of a bigger system that doesn't necessarily work for us. And sometimes they can be life-saving and amazing, but sometimes 
It's a funny story. A year and a half after I've done my process, I read, I start, I had a binge, not a food, but a binge of start reading in different forums of medical, professional, Western forums. What do they say about my journey? Now, by the time I read it, after a year and a half, more or less, I was supposed to die, I don't remember, but I think 57 times. I don't remember the exact number, yeah? And I'm there reading it, laughing. <laughs> and I say, wow, lucky I didn't read it in the beginning. <laughs> because, yeah, it might, it might make me feel. It might create this, oh, strengthening of the mental story of this imitation of this body. So yeah, we would experience deep, deep, profound changes, changes in our physicality, in our emotions, in our mind, and from those, if we allow, in our spirit. So when we step into integration, so when the story on my mother, she finished the integration, <laughs> she finished the process, and mm -hmm. Now I, I have the ability to share with you in a humble way after many years. And some of you know that I had the privileges way to facilitate beautiful souls in our journey. One of them is Rayma Orr. You ever know Rayma Orr? He was a beautiful friend and I had the privilege to initiate him in his path. And more beautiful souls like this, some of them in Israel and you don't know that. But then slowly, slowly we grew bigger. And we started doing groups as well right now that I'm not alone. Actually, right now, Nicholas, I think you told me it's the biggest group that ever was in history of panic living, no? So, yeah. Yeah, because you know many people. So right now, the last group, we started 116 people in Israel. So when we facilitate this amount of people into this deep journey, I don't do this alone anymore. I have a whole team of mentors, of people. Mentors for me is not somebody that studied NLP and they come to be a mentor in here. It's great, yeah? Not disrespect, but he's somebody that walked the path of the full pranic process, went through all the three stages of preparation, initiation, and integration. Know this journey from within. And only then, they're welcome to be mentors. So my mother now is a mentor in the full pranic process. <laughs> you know, I thought I'm in the peak. But then my father came. <laughs> I said, you know, I thought you guys are crazy. But I don't sleep with you in bed. <laughs> you know, you I just know you're my son. But then you did it to your mother. <laughs> you did it to my wife. I sleep with her in the same bed. I'm staying with her in the same with her with the same house. I see what has happened to this woman. Until I'm 82 years old. But I want this thing to my life. So my father went through the preparation, initiation, integration as well. And, and then what do you think? My father became a mentor. <laughs> Give me time. What time? Good. We're quarter past the hour. So, you know, from 10 years, much to share with you. But this was a little bit of a glimpse into my life, into my family's life. <laughs> and yeah, I would say it's okay. Right now, my partner is doing the process. <laughs> She's right now in the process. So let's see how, it, how she would handle. Not everybody succeeds. It's okay. <laughs> so slowly, slowly, step by step. Yeah, yeah, she knows, she knows. So yeah, 
this was some sharings I could share with you from 10 years of experience and so much more to share, but hey, we have next year. <laughs> and right now I want to open it up for a little bit of Q&A. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Tal, for all of this inspiration, for your open-heartedness, your wisdom, your sharing. I'm moved. I know all of us are moved here. Hearing the stories about your family. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I've written into our chat your contact information online, where people can get a hold of you and on Facebook, and also awesome. your website for the process. There's a question. Is this only available in Israel in person? Is this available in other languages or online? We care about online stuff. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. So what's happening right now is that for many years, I do processes in Hebrew and in English. But lately, I stopped temporarily to do processes in English. I need to improve my English. No, not because of this. <laughs> but because we build a system in Israel now. We built, a, we built a sane system to take us out of the system. As you can understand, 116 people doing a process is not little. And it is allowed by a system that we're building that is so accurate, that is so to the little, little details of a pranic process of being with the mentors and with support team to the mentors. So we're building something that I was not doing for most of the day. So when I was alone, I was doing process in Hebrew, then process in English. Two in here, one in English. Now, lately, I started the English to just build it in my language, honestly, I tell you. To build it in the way that is most, most, most accurate, in the way that I could bear to the world with the whole team. And we're a team of almost 25 people doing this together. So once these systems are built in a good way, we're coming back to English. So right now, temporarily, we do not offer process in English. Um, but if I already told you on my partner, so she's from French. She's from France. <laughs> so she doesn't speak Hebrew. And she already opened. I, I share with you even things, you know, a bit intimate and close to, to where we are right now. It's how I want to do the process. <laughs> so sorry, my love, it's only in Hebrew. So, okay, she's learning Hebrew slowly, slowly. <laughs> but with that, many people in the past, even if it's in English, even, sorry, even if it's in Hebrew, can you do like live translation, like Nicholas and the guys doing here? <laughs> and I said, no, come on, just be patient. We will do an English process soon. But I really thought it would be soon. <laughs> And then I feel every time now we're still working on the Hebrew because we need to build this foundation for the rest of the world. We don't need, we have the privilege. And with this, she is opening the gate for us because once she came to me, I couldn't say no. So she has three translators only for her. And it's almost a nine month journey. So they're doing amazing work, but it opens the field Maybe next time, and we don't do many processes because it's long processes. So there is very little that is offered right now. At least right now, with these few processes, it might be that one of the next ones, even if it's in Hebrew, we will, we will do live translation. If not, anyway, there would probably in the few next, I don't know how many months or years, whenever I'm called to it next, to serve these English groups as well. So yeah, anyway, what Morgan put in the chat, you can just sign up there. If it's right now, a sign up that doesn't really do something active tomorrow, let's say. If you sign up for the next Zoom meeting, when it would be, I cannot tell you. <laughs> but you would know first, 
if you want to know deeper on the process, because today I shared different things. When I do a Zoom meeting like this, I do it as well more specified on the process and on the depth and all the different things and details that people need to know. So if you are interested, you're welcome to sign up there. And when there would be the time, we would email you, hey, it's time. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So saying Zoom meetings, I conclude that this is done online. Yeah, yeah perfect. I, even in Israel, I do it online. Okay. It's just that we have Israelis that are not from Israel that are joining. And just when we're in Israel, we sometimes meet physically. Right? Yeah, but great. I do it online for many years. Wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, one more thing. Online, but not recorded. It's me there. Recording your progress. Yeah. Live. <laughs> it's me there. At least now, I don't know. Maybe people see it in 10 years and it's a different story. Right. But at least now, it's time. Great. We have maybe a few more minutes, if it's okay with you, to just take some questions. Does anybody have questions here from live audience? There must be some burning questions. Yeah. Go on. And yeah. until she's coming, I forgot. If yeah. People ask us. They ask as well for facilitators to know about how to create a full pranic journey. So we're asked about this sometimes. It's not some something we're still offering right now. But again, it is to really build the system on the deeper level as we do right now, as you understand. And when it will be the time, I think the facilitator's course would be already in English, not only in Hebrew. So it's also something that might happen in the future, but the base is to go through the full pranic process before that. Sometimes we're asking that to share this information. Fantastic. Thank you, Tal. Sorry, we have to be on this side of the speakers so that it doesn't make a loud sound. Thank you. I was wondering, um, as you're uh, guiding so many people in your country, uh, how does the government, uh, what, what does the government think about uh, what you're doing? Do you have any yeah. feedback? So right now, Carrefour has entered Israel. <laughs> Carrefour is a French... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Carrefour decided if you do prana, we enter Israel. I'm kidding, but no, she really came, really came to Israel. But no, it's not because of prana. And <laughs> yeah. But right now, I'm honestly to tell you in a position that, uh, let's say, like, some of my dearest friends tell me, Tal, I am, we're worried for you. It's a bit dangerous what we're doing. And from one hand, I understand it because I'm on the front in Israel as well as television, radio, podcasts, and different places. So I'm in front of that. I'm in front line for that. But I'm just a man that believes in pioneering work. And when you're a pioneer, you just stay up until you finish your work. And it's harsh to say, but somebody might stop me in ways that are less good. But something that I have deep within is I have trust. I have trust in ways and levels that I haven't had in the past. And this pranic journey, being nourished from prana, allowed me to be more of a trusting being. And in this trust, this is not a joke from me. To say, creation, I'm in your hands. This is not just when things are nice. This is in every situation in our most challenging situation. And in this, I feel, you know, I'm just here humbly to do the work in the best way I can. And if creation wants to stop the work, it's not the government will stop it. It's creation will stop it. And if creation wants this journey to deepen and me to be humble and blessed to serve it, I'm here. <laughs> As you hear, um, we're here uh, with a lot of gratitude and uh, support for you. So it's not just uh, invisible. You've got a whole lot of friends and people who believe in you and believe in what you're doing. And we're here, yeah, lifting you up along the way. So any other questions or are we all? Ah, fantastic. Hello. 
I wanted to ask, do you have any opinion or any experience with urine therapy? Urine therapy. So I tasted it in the past. I'll be honest. <laughs> I've tasted it. I've tried. But it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> with that, for now, I'm the kind of person that is deepening into something right now and not as my young, uh, let's say, version, that try to do everything at once and then not succeed to do too much. Right now, I'm deepening into something. And I have this patient, this process of patient, to deepen into it. And once I feel I'm stable enough, just like I feel now, I'm not the uh, uh, process in English, but it is, you can say, do already, no, it needs time, I'm certain. So if you're certain, you do the right thing in the right time. So also for this, I think there is deep wisdom in that, the humanity, to maybe not still being able to digest on the proper way. Yeah. And with it, I cannot tell you from my personal perspective, because I didn't try it for, for a long time. I just had a couple of things. <laughs> but yeah, maybe even one day in the future, I will try. And in a deeper way, and then you're asking this question again, and it will give you more insight. Another question. We'll just take a, a couple more so we don't take up too much time here. As we guided many people, did you make did you make any statistics? How many people give up the process? How many people succeed? So with this many years, with chronic processes. Once we do shorter chronic processes, like the 21 days or different like this, so the statistics was around 10% of people that stay in this lifestyle. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. But again, to measure it in after 21 days with no preparation, no integration, is I just feel not still the fair thing to do to ourselves. So to measure it on a longer way, with a longer process is a different game. And this is the process that we do right now. If we see the long term, it's between 50 to 70% of people that could actually sustain this lifestyle. Now, in the past, for me, it was a harsh statistics. Because, yeah, also me, I'm trying to say I'm an ex-perfectionist. Trying to say I'm an ex-perfectionist because still it comes in my sometimes in my being, but I just release more into life. But as one that was driven by perfectionism more in the past, it was really hard for me that it's not 100 and 11 Then slowly, slowly, I observed with the years, this is human nature, generally in processes. And I talked with some of my colleagues, not only in chronic living, but as well in, let's say, deep processes. That's at least one of the persons, one of the people that I uh, really appreciate the most, one of the people that I study a lot from is in Israel, he told me, Tal, if your process is 20 to 30 percent, you're good. Of people that sustain this for the long term. Anything above that, you're excellent. So we're trying to be even more than excellent. But right now, this is the percentage more or less of what we do in the full chronic process, 50 to 70. Do we have any last question? I think we put the hands together. I think it's last two. <laughs> this is simultaneously. Hi. I would like to know after the integration process, what does the um, life look like concerning food freedom for the individual? Are some of them just doing. Are they, sorry, in the ritual? For each thing. Individuals, yes. Are some on um, um, like a fluid diet or just some on water or do some eat uh, food? Like what does it look like from people after the process, the nine months? Yeah. So not only after the nine months, you already in the nine months after we finish the initiation and deepening into the life after. Maybe the battery of the... My mic is a bit off because I hear the white noise. You hear the white noise? It's in there. 
from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Only now I get it in here in the space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. So sorry for you guys. And um, what I'm talking about in running journeys, what I am aiming for is decreasing food dependency in 50 to 80%. And this is something really meaningful because, as we know, there are level fours. Level fours, vegetarian level four is people that, let's say, decreased 100% of food dependency. But some of us, and then there is level three. The level three for me is the hybrid engine. The hybrid engine means we don't say to the food engine, Boo, you're not good. Oh, okay, you're there, you're cool, but I'm not only depending on you anymore. The hybrid engine is open in front as well. But as well, let's see how many. So some people do front processes and they want to be Bertheran level four from day 10. <laughs> or it doesn't matter, even after four months, it doesn't happen. I had students finishing the process and wanted to be level four. And what I advised for them? Stabilize level three before. And level three is hybrid engine. And by that, we decrease the food dependency by 50 to 80%. But still, what is the other 20 to 50%? It's not that in this 20 to 50%, we need, in my experience, in what I see for more than a decade, personal and group level. Okay, so let's now calculate which minerals I need to put, how much protein they need, what vitamins, this is not the delta of the 20 to 50. It's about, in the beginning, mainly drinking for a few months. This is the recommendation to stabilize it. After that, to eat if you want, but not every day. For me, as an example, I eat usually a day or two a week. If I want to go crazy, I do three. And with that, I had weeks that I even ate more than that, and I had months and years on only liquids. The most I've done was two and a half years on only liquids. So where you get in the end of those nine months is freedom. Free to choose. And humble freedom, because us as humans, we want the ultimate freedom. We want the 100% sometimes. They say, let's be happy to understand it's decreased in this 50 to 80 percent. If you want the 100 percent, you need to deepen a bit more into your journey in order to reach there. And the delta, like what's left, is not to balance it when you drink or eat. It's to drink from something that I observed in these years and I call the joy complex. Drink out of joy, eat out of joy, consume out of joy. And in the joy complex, to differentiate between the short-term joy, temptation joy, just because I smell it, I hear it, somebody say it's tasty, I see it, sensory, sensory joy complex, which is short-term, is not bad, but it's short-term, to long-term joy complex. Because some people finish this journey and they're tricky. The mind is tricky. They tell me, ah, do I need to consume with the joy complex? We're just after initiation, yeah? They say, but I want the hamburger. That's my joy complex. What to do? Even vegan hamburger, okay? What to do? I say first, whatever you want. Because you're a master of your life. And you need to choose with you. But if you want to hear what would be more supportive of the journey, probably not to go with the short-term joy complex with this hamburger right now. You maybe can do it even in the future. You can definitely do it now, but it would maybe serve less your long-term joy complex. It has to be a prime thing in the middle level. And when we consume from this joy compass, the vitamins, the minerals, the proteins, when we consume them from prana, from joy, from love, there is nothing missing. This is the real whole food. Mm. 
I don't know what I could say after that. Thank you so much. It's been such a blessing to have you here, to have you as a pioneer um, walking ahead, but always looking over your shoulder at who's coming behind with a lot of love and a lot of care. I really see that from you. I see you as a pioneer in consciousness, in care, gratitude, appreciation of life. And uh, for that, I'm deeply grateful. And I know that all of us here are receiving the benefit from your energy, not just your words, not just from the mind, but from your heart. So thank you so much for joining us again at the Pranic World Festival. It's been such a blessing for all of us. Thanks, Tom. Thank Thank you guys. Just, a, just a reminder, I have put his contact information into the chat on the Telegram group and on the Zoom call for those online. And also, I'm sure you can just Google Tal Gaboa because he's well known. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. <laughs>